Good morning, everyone. Thanks for attending today's Boston Bruins Town Hall featuring Bruins prospect Jack Sonica. I'm Eric Russo, digital reporter for the Boston Bruins, here alongside Sports Hub radio analyst Bob Beers to moderate today's discussion. Joining us in attendance today are our longest season ticket holders of 20 plus years and select Boston Garden Society members. We hope you and your families are staying safe and healthy, and we thank you for your continued support of the Boston Bruins. We will begin shortly, but first I'd like to point out that the chat button and raise hand button on your screen are unavailable today. However, you can participate by submitting a question for Jack by clicking the Q&A button. So with that, I will turn it over to Beersy to kick things off. Yeah, Jack, thanks, uh, thanks for joining us here today. Uh, hopefully you and your family are all uh, safe and healthy and getting through this. I'll, I'll start it out with the way we've started a lot of these. I mean, how are you keeping your days? How are you keeping in shape right now with, uh, with everything that's been going on? Yeah, um, it's definitely a, a weird time in the world. That's something, you know, I've never went through and, and I'm sure, you know, most people haven't. So um, definitely the longest I've been kept off the ice or um, away from competition. So um, trying to stay in shape with uh, working out in the gym at home. Uh, me and uh, my stepbrother kind of took the garage over and uh, set some workout stuff in there. So I don't know how happy my dad was about that. But um, just trying to stay in shape. Uh, been rollerblading a lot. Uh, makes it easier when it's nice out where the sun's shining. So you can go out, uh, you know, get some fresh air, take the dog for a walk. But um, doing everything I can to try to keep a competitive edge and um, just get stronger. Thanks, Jack. Uh, fans, just a reminder that the Q&A button is at the bottom of your screen. We'd love to hear from all of you. We have one in the queue so far from Martin Evers. Uh, Jack, he says, are there any particular players you're looking forward to possibly being on a line with or playing with when you get to Boston at some point? Uh, I don't think really necessarily uh, any certain player I'd like to play on a line with, but, um, you know, just being able to, to play with, you know, such great players that have, you know, put themselves in good positions in the league and have great success, you know, like uh, Chara, Bergeron, Krejci, the list goes on. So um, just guys that I grew up watching play from TV when I was little to be able to play with them. It's definitely going to be really cool. And Charlie Rossi's 10 years old. Uh, he wants to know, have you seen yourself on a hockey card yet? And what was that like? Uh, I have. Uh, sometimes I get asked to sign a hockey card and uh, definitely a, a cool experience the first time it happened. Um, I think I was unaware that I was even on a hockey card, but um, you know, when things like that happen, it's, it's definitely, you know, cool to step back and, and take a moment to realize that, um, you know, I've, I've reached a certain point in my career where something like that's able to happen and it's definitely cool. Jack, I was telling you before we went on the air that uh, I officially feel old now, right? I'm interviewing um, <laughs> players that have their fathers that I played with in college. And I played with your yeah. dad, uh, Todd, in, in college. Um, good player. I hope you have better hands than him. And you can tell him that. Uh, <laughs> yeah. If you, if, what has he passed along to you? Yeah, I mean, he's kind of... Um let me do my own thing since a certain age. He's kind of always stressed that it's important to pave your own path and, um, you know, make your own mistakes and learn from them. But um, he's definitely been my main influence. Um, someone who has shown me what it takes to be a pro hockey player and what it takes to get to that point in your career. So he's um, always put me in a position to succeed and, um, you know, put, put my needs over his wants. So I, I can't thank him enough. Jack, we got one from Anonymous here, wants to know about uh, your front teeth there and if you've lost any more chiclets during quarantine. Yeah, I figured that one was coming. No, I, I haven't, but um, as this has gone along, I've kind of debated on the fact if I should fix them again or if I should leave them. So uh, it's something I really haven't came on a firm decision on, but um, you know, I've fixed them twice and they fell out. So you know, maybe give it one more try and start wearing a mouth guard. And again, we encourage everyone to click on that Q&A button at the bottom of the screen to hear from everybody. Uh, Martin Evers has another one coming in here. He says, I have seen you compared to various great NHL players. Do you model your game after any of them? And who did you like growing up? 
Uh, growing up, it was kind of the, the Jonathan Taves, Patrick Kane era um, when I really started to watch hockey. So when Chicago was having their success with, with those guys leading the charge, it was really fun to watch them. Um, but ever since I you know, became a part of the Bruins organization, tried to uh, key on Bergeron a little bit just to see his tendencies and, and how he approaches the game. Obviously, um, 200 foot player who, you know, might not be the flashiest, but, you know, always gets the job done and, and doesn't cheat on the offense and, and plays hockey the right way. Jack, take us through your season down in Providence. Unfortunate that it's, it's not going to continue, obviously, but um, you guys had a really good year down there. You had a very good season down there. Just take us through the, the progression and, and what you've learned here uh, in, in this season. Yeah, I think um, first pro year is definitely a learning curve in terms of, you know, preparing yourself to compete every night at a level of consistency where you might not have to do in junior hockey. So um, definitely uh, off the ice learns how to watch more of the veteran players and how they take care of their body, you know, how they eat, how they stretch, prepare, cool down, stuff like that, that doesn't always happen in junior hockey. So I think it was just a little learning curve to learn how to become a pro and, and to approach the game like a pro. And I think uh, and down in Providence, I couldn't have you know a better cast to see that done right with the leadership that they had. And um, like you said, very unfortunate way to end. Uh, we were really on a hot streak there with 12 wins in a row, I believe. And um, it was just so fun to come to the rink every day. There was a good mix of older guys and younger guys and everyone communicated. And um, it was, it's really a good thing to say for the older guys, the way they were able to connect that room. Jack, another one here from Charlie Rossi he wants to know any advice for young players uh, who want to improve their game. Yeah, I think if I could, if I could give myself advice back when I was younger, um, just to be enjoy yourself and to enjoy the game. It's, it's such an evolving game. It's fun to be a part of. And uh, sometimes you can get lost and in, in putting pressure on yourself and, um, you know, wanting to be the best, but you're a young kid and, and you're going to make mistakes and it's, it's the way you approach those. And hopefully, you know, you can just have fun with them and learn from them and just enjoy the game. Cause it's a lot of fun. Uh, Mike Loftus wants to know, have you been told anything about whether you'll come up uh, to Boston if the NHL is able to resume the season? I haven't heard much on that topic. Obviously, I um, see the rumors on social media or whatever, um, what the plan is. But, no, I mean, I, I, would, I would love for a scenario like that to play out. And um, hopefully, you know, the NHL comes back and, um, you know, I'm able to be a part of that. That would definitely be something you know that I'd be looking forward to. Jack you guys yeah, have a good coaching well. staff down in Providence and it's um, it's a developmental league it, it, the American Hockey League is what areas have the coaches really focused on for you or what, what areas have you focused on trying to get better at? Uh, a big thing this year um, obviously I, I'm not uh, as strong as a lot of the players in pro hockey. So we kind of keyed on um, ways to get around that in the offensive zone, or whether that's protecting the puck or, or holding onto the puck or taking space that you have to kind of separate from your guy in the offensive zone. And um, that's really all we touched on offensively. And they just wanted to always make sure that I was, um, you know, approaching the game to play a 200 foot game and not cheating on offense, just making sure that, so I'm playing the right way. I'm taking care of the defensive zone and, you know, hopefully the offense takes care of itself. Jack, along the lines of uh, one of those questions a couple minutes ago, Emily Benjamin wants to know if you are a black ace, uh, how do you think you could contribute uh, if you do come up? It's a good question. Um, last year I went through the experience um, to see that type of competition and uh, firsthand live was unbelievable it was a, such a good playoffs with you know an unfortunate ending but you know this this time around you know hopefully um we come out on the other side and you know i think i've i've had a good year down in providence where i've kind of proved that i'm able to contribute to help the organization win and 
you know, whether they decide that's as a black ace or playing, that's for them to decide. But I'm, you know, going to be ready. I feel ready and um, just willing to do whatever they ask when, when the time comes. Uh, Michael Gould asks, uh, have you stayed in the Providence, Boston area, or where have you spent uh, this quarantine time? I'm actually back home in Michigan now uh, with my family. At one point, um, it was me, my brother, and my two stepbrothers all at home. So definitely a, a change of pace for my parents. But, um, you know, I just decided I'd, I'd come back home here to, to see everyone. And um, in a time like this where you, you don't really know when it's going to be over, I think it was, it was important to come, you know, spend my time with them and just feel at home and uh, social distance and just kind of take care of myself back here. Jack, you mentioned a good mix that you guys had down in Providence of, of <clears throat> some veteran players and some younger players. Who are some of the guys that have had um, – players that have had a big influence on you uh, so far? Yeah, two two guys actually this year who came over from a, a different AHL team, uh, Brendan Woods and Brendan Gantz. I think I remember my first day uh, rolling out in the gym. They, they really took the time to, you know, have a full conversation with me and they were engaged in it and try to get to know me because I was the new guy and the rookie. So, I mean, just everyone, like, Alex Petrovic, Paul Carey, all the older guys just do such a good job at connecting the room where, you know, there's not really older and younger guys. It's just more a team atmosphere. And, you know, everyone loved coming to the rink and loved playing together. Jack, Kevin Bautour wants to know, as far as training and nutrition, is that guidance coming from Providence or Boston at this point? Uh, I think they come from pretty similar areas right now i'm working with the providence strength coach uh timmy to make sure that i have all the the workouts that i need to be doing back home he has a list uh kind of of all the equipment i have and uh puts together a weekly plan for me which is which is nice and uh nutrition wise i'm in, i'm always in contact with julie who is with boston just to kind of make sure i'm feeling healthy uh putting the right things in my body and just prepared to to feel my best whenever this thing is over and we're playing hockey again. As we wait for some more questions, Simon, Jack, I'll throw this one out to you. You mentioned that black ace experience last mm -hmm. uh, spring. Was, was that a confidence builder for you to be sort of around the team at that time and, and to see what they did? I think, I think it was a confidence booster for sure to be able to be a part of that. I think organization, and the team did a very good job at making us feel like we were a part of it and, you know, to stay ready. And then also another thing, I think I got a lot better as a hockey player because we were skating every day and, you know, we were able to, with the group we had, pick on certain things we needed to get better at just because we had that time and that luxury. So I think, you know, skating every day um, with a good good group of hockey players and then you know at night watching uh nhl playoffs uh definitely i think was a confidence booster like you said but i think also um in terms of development i think uh i was able to get better during that experience jack you touched on a little bit already with their coaching staff down in providence and what they've tried to work with you on um what's the message from the organization whether it be swings or, or fergie or or Jamie Langenbrunner, whoever is talking to you about, okay, here's what you need to do in order to take the next step. I think mentally they want me kind of in a headspace where um, to be where my feet is. I think this year is really important that they wanted me to be fully engaged where I was in Providence. And, you know, luckily enough, I, I got two games under my belt, but just to kind of learn how to be a professional, um, it was a learning curve this year, like I talked about. So there was a lot of things that I had to learn and to implement into myself and just kind of, you know, soak in how to be a professional. I think there's always ways to get better as a hockey player. And um, if you're going to ask kind of what I want to get better at, it's, it's everything. I'd like to improve everything about my game, but I think outside of the rink, learning how to be a, be a professional and, um, be prepared for what an NHL season has to offer to the body. Jack Rick O'Callaghan wants to know, what's it like to play for Jay Leach? 
Uh, a lot of fun. He is a very approachable coach. So, um, you know, I think he's definitely what I needed my first year in the AHL, someone uh, who was able to communicate with me when things weren't going right or um, was able to communicate with you when things were going right. So a uh, very transparent coach where he will let you know what he wants to be, how he wants it to be done. And if you're doing it right, he'll let you know. And if not, he'll let you know. So just, um, just very approachable in terms of my first year uh, made me feel really comfortable. And um, I think he, he knew that I wanted to improve every day at the rink and he put me in a kind of position to learn something new every day. And Martin Evers says, what have you been doing for fun uh, during quarantine outside of training? Uh, we just got a, a hot tub, actually. We were kind of losing our minds a little bit uh, with what to do at night. Uh, we're not used to having everyone home. So uh, we, we made a space in the backyard there, made a day out of it, leveled out all, all the stuff and put a hot tub down and um, laid mulch down. Last time it was nice. So, so just trying to, to get outside. Um, if it's ever sunny, I, I'm for sure going on a rollerblade. Uh, sometimes, you know, with the hockey stick and a ball around the block, or sometimes if it's nice out, I'll kind of go on a longer one and kind of push myself to see how many miles I can get. But it's tough because there's, there's not a lot of people to see at home. You can't just go see your friends when you're back here just because of the social distancing. And um, Michigan's pretty well shut down right now. But uh, it's nice to have my brothers back here and, and my parents to, you know, play a board game or, or again, if it's nice, I'll get something done outside. Jack, you touched on it. You played your first uh, NHL game here. Um, was it, I think it was in Montreal, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. Um, yeah. Take me back to that. How, how did you feel in that game? What were the nerves like? I mean, it's been over 30 years since I played my first NHL game, but I still remember it. Uh, everybody remembers that first game. Mm -hmm. You know, take me back to some of your feelings there. Yeah, it was, uh, it was a pretty eventful day. I think in the moment, I kind of just lived in the moment. And then, you know, when it was done, I was able to reflect. But uh, it happened really fast. The pregame skate, I remember. Um, I felt really comfortable, felt good, felt ready to go. And then by the by puck drop, uh, I'm not really a nervous guy. I don't really get nervous, but I will have to admit I was I was pretty nervous. I think anyone playing their first NHL game would be so. Um, I think I got hit pretty hard on my first shift in the corner and kind of got me into it. So, you know, I got hit and then I was able to be like, all right, well, I'm here now. So uh, after that, nerves settled down and just a lot of fun. Um, to, to have my whole family there too, they were able to make it on such short notice was, um, you know, really special for me. And I think I never imagined that moment without any of them there. So it was cool to have them all there. And yeah, as the game went on, uh, settled in, but definitely nervous at the start. Jack, Rich Thompson wants to ask you about the PK and your seven shorthanded goals. Uh, what led to that success this year? Uh, yeah, I think, um, you know, when you start getting opportunities shorthanded, uh, and you put them in, it's definitely a confidence booster for the next time you're penalty killing, but, um, definitely more important to kill the penalty. And that's something, you know, I had to learn as the year went on is to make the main priority, uh, to kill the penalty, but, um, the penalty kill coach in Providence, Ryan Mujanel, uh, you know, every day I came to the rink, he put together something, um, a video session for me, whether it's, you know, Bergeron stick that he did last night uh, and he'd have it together for me to see. So just uh, being able to work with him and um, kind of dissect how penalty killing works was, was really nice. And, um, you know, I, the seven shorthanded goals were, you know, nice to get those type of opportunities. But, you know, I think I just wanted to learn how to be a, um, a penalty killer and someone who can kill a good penalty uh, this year. And uh, the coaching staff really helped with that. Another one coming in here about uh, the draft saying, take us back to that moment uh, when you heard your name called. That was really special. Um, obviously, 
when Boston was up picking, you know, a lot of things go through your mind, you know, with, like with the history of the organization or types of player that have played there. And uh, when they said my name, it was just, it was a really special moment for me. I remember hugging my family and uh, my siblings and just walking down to stage. It, it was a really surreal moment. And um, kind of one of those things, just like my first NHL game where, you know, you live in the moment, but then after that, you're, um, you're able to reflect on what just happened. And uh, obviously a, a his, history everywhere in the organization and to be picked by someone, by an organization like that, it was special. Jack, what, what um, when you watch video, you mentioned uh, Bergeron or, or on the penalty kill, kind of watching stick position, things like that. Do you watch any <laughs> other Bruins players as, as far as, or do you try to pat pattern yourself after any other Bruins players? Let's put it that way. Uh, not not really pattern. I think, you know, whenever you want to key on, on a certain NHL player, there's going to be something about their game that sticks out. And I touched on it earlier, um, a learning curve in, in the offensive zone, uh, me being, you know, a slimmer guy was to separate and to protect the puck. And um, someone, you know, who does that really well is Charlie Coyle. Um, in the offensive zone, he's a really rangy guy, the way that you know, he can separate from his man with a quick spin and get him on his back. So I think there's players who all have something about them that sticks out. And uh, I mean, if, if you're able to implement, you know, even one thing from, from certain guys, I think that's going to help your overall game. Jack, Matthew Worthington wants to know, when you were up in Boston, was there someone that sort of took you under their wing? Um. Not really, but uh, I got caught when I did get called up. Uh, I mentioned him earlier. Uh, Brendan Gantz uh, came up with me, and I hadn't really known him uh, too well. I, it was only about a month into the season, uh, but we kind of that whole experience uh, spent it together. He picked me up from my apartment in Providence, and we drove to the plane together in Boston. And, um, so just to have someone like that who's been through it, who's been, you know, up and down throughout his career, uh, really helped and, and made it easier on me to understand, you know, certain things like uh, if I know if I'm in the lineup or not. And, um, you know, because sometimes that's not there for you to see. So he kind of just talked talk to me about it and, and what to expect. And Charlie Rossi has another one. He says, uh, what did it feel like to get that first NHL point out of the way in Montreal? Yeah, that was uh, definitely a big relief. Uh, but the guys made it really easy on me that night. They put up seven before that happened. So uh, a meaningless goal at the end of the day, but, um, you know, not for myself. That was definitely a special moment, uh, something I've dreamed of. So uh, for it to happen, you know, in my first game, that, that was definitely cool. You know, in Canada, the World Junior Tournament is such a huge deal. It's, it's <clears> probably not as big down here in the States, but it's <clears> in Canada, it's, it's everything once that comes around. Yeah. What was your experience like there? Uh, yeah, that was awesome experience. Probably the most fun I've had, you know, playing hockey, to be able to play, you know, in Canada, right in Vancouver, uh, the home crowd, like the way they would cheer, you couldn't even really hear yourself think on the bench, so... It was, you know, such an unfortunate ending the way that happened in the quarterfinals. But, um, you know, whenever you're able to, to don your, your country's colors, it's, it's pretty special. And, you know, the fact that it was the biggest stage um, for, for a 20-year-old, the World Juniors, and in Canada, and to see the hype around us in the city of Vancouver was um, something I'm, not, I'm never going to forget. Jack, we got two or three more here to finish out. Uh, first yeah. one from Connor Ryan. Uh, he says, would you be comfortable making the switch to wing if you got the call up? And do you have to change your game at all, depending on where you play? Yeah, I, I, I actually, um, Leachy used me on wing a little bit throughout the year when, when I had to. And uh, I feel really comfortable there. I think um, I can contribute whether I'm playing center or wing. Uh, obviously my natural position is center and it's um you know what I'd like to have a career in but I'm definitely comfortable on the wing I've played it numerous times in my career and you know I think this year especially I kind of learned uh the difference of playing wing and center you know being in pro hockey so 
I've learned kind of what it takes to be a winger and, and the differences in, in your job and what you're accountable for. So I uh, definitely would feel comfortable playing either. And Sophia Yerksevich from Nesson has a question. She says, uh, when you say you really learned a lot on how to be a pro away from the ice, what does that entail? So in junior hockey, it's you only spend a couple hours at the rink usually just because you have high school and whatnot. And uh, when you get to be a pro, your main obligation is hockey. Your only obligation is hockey. So, you know, getting to the rink 30 minutes before you're supposed to, to make sure your hips are feeling good, to roll out, to get a, you know, warm up in or something like that. And, um, and then staying later at the rink and cooling down or doing an extra workout or, or therapy or, or something like that to make sure your body feels better and, and um, ready to go whenever that next game is. So just, really taking your time to understand that the main priority is hockey and your body and um, what you put in it, what you eat, supplements, how you take care of it before and after every skate. Just something I learned pretty quick watching, you know, the way players handle themselves. And we'll finish with this one from Mike Loftus. He uh, mentions uh, having won 12 in a row and just being so close to the playoffs and how disappointing was it to have to stop so abruptly at that point? It's very disappointing. Um, I think I can speak for the whole team. When I say this, I really think we had something special down there. Um, the way it was a, a team first mentality and, um, you know, everybody was happy with each other's success. And at the end of the day, just wanted to win the hockey game. But, um, you know, this thing is obviously much bigger than hockey. And there's things that we need to do as citizens to stop the spread. and. Um, so obviously it, it's disappointing for sure, just because we ha I think we had something special going, but uh, like I said, this is bigger than hockey and um, it's what has to be done. Awesome, well, thanks so much, Jack. We appreciate you taking the time. Beersy, thank you as always. And thanks to all of you for joining us today. We hope to see you back around the rink real soon. Take care. Thanks for having me, guys. Bye. Thanks, Jack. Thanks.